Yeah, but I do feel really um, sad for my younger self, you know, I wish, um, I don't know how my life would have changed mm -hmm. if this hadn't been a part of my life at all. Welcome to Why Indian Men Raid Presents Survivor Stories, where we hear people talk about their personal experiences of gender violence. We broadcast the voices of these inspiring women who speak frankly about their survival stories. Hi, I'm Tara Kaushal. When Suhasini Thomas saw our Survivor Stories series, she reached out to tell me hers. How, from the time she was a little child, she was the victim of sexual abuse at the hands of an older cousin. It was a circumstance that persisted for over a decade until she finally cut him out of her life. Speaking out, she said, would give her catharsis. And here she is today, speaking for the first time publicly with Somya Rajara about how the experience impacted her life and how a recent stint of therapy has helped her overcome the trauma. So, uh, you're a survivor of child sexual abuse. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened? So, my earliest memory is of um, me being at my aunt's place and uh, the abuser uh, is my second cousin. Right. Um, so, I remember him touching my genitals as I was lying on... Um, you know, I, was, I was asleep or trying to, trying to sleep. I was probably about two and um, you know, this has been quite a recent discovery because it's, it's related to uh, my recent attempts at therapy. Uh, my family moved from Kolkata to Vaisak and um, in Vaisak, uh, my aunt and my cousins were the only relatives we knew so we spent a lot of time with them. Yeah. And, and what, what sort of a relationship did you have with your cousin in the family? Were you guys close otherwise? Uh, really? Quite complicated. Yes, we did have a nice relationship. We play a lot during the day, and uh, he was he was nice to me. He was nice to my sister. You know, they they had a lovely house uh, with lots of animals, and um, you know, we'd go on treks, we'd uh, go fishing. So it was it was all fun during the day. During the day, we had to you know, I had to pretend everything was normal. And what were the physical and emotional repercussions? Were there, were, were there attempts at penetration, etc.? Was there pain? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, there were attempts at penetration later on, and I re remember that. I remember lots of nights when, um, you know, it was it was painful and um, um, it was confusing. But I knew um, I knew there was um, something wrong because and uh, because I couldn't go to the bathroom for days and. Then, you know, after that. Uh, apart from that, there was um, everything else that comes under under sexual abuse that was that was tried on me, and um, it was you know I, I find it quite hard to believe that um, no one else no one else uh, found out or knew what was happening right. because it was all <coughs> we we all slept in the same room and. Uh, um, this would go on for most of the night, mm -hmm. you know. I, I would have a sleepless night and um, wake up with a lot of pain in the morning. Um, and his sister and my sister uh, slept in the same room. I found it quite hard to protest uh, yeah. at that time because of the family dynamics as well. Could um, you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. What was the reason you couldn't talk to your mother or your sister or your aunt about what was happening? Yeah, like I said, I think um, my mum felt really indebted to the family, and um, you know, they, she thought they played a big role in helping, uh, helping her, especially after she um, uh, gave birth to me and helped her settle in and find a job. 
my aunt, she was um, she was quite a strong personality, and I remember being really scared of her. Uh, she was really not easy to approach, especially after my dad died when I was ten. It was usually quite silent around her, and um, I think the silence also came from the numbness from the nights, right. from the nights, nights of abuse. So, no, it was just debilitating. So how long did the abuse go on? When did you start to confront what was happening and when did it stop? The only thing that changed was probably I, I became a little more resolute. So I started seeing or visiting them less. Um, but it happened, uh, you know, it was always around the corner. He would uh, either come home if we didn't go there for a long time. And, um, you know, it was a bit like he... Um, wanted to take up ownership of my body, like he was grooming me for something. Um, you know, he'd always say, I love you, baby, and you know, you're, uh, you're, you're beautiful. And there was all this language that was used. So yeah, I think in my teens, I slowly started retali retaliating. And so when were you able to finally tell him to stop? He tried to take my clothes off when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And that was when I just pushed him and said, stop. So what was the next phase of your life like? It, it was a happy phase. I think once I felt like this was behind me, you know, I um, um, I went to college, I had lots of friends. This was kind of pushed back uh, to the back of my memory. I remember telling my mom when I was 18, that was when I finally plucked up the courage to tell her. And uh, the response wasn't great. Um, she said, why are you telling me now? Um, which now I understand why she did. She was, you know, um, she probably was shocked and that was her way of dealing with it. I responded with a great deal of anger and um, I think that started a few rebellious years at home. I mean, later on it became clear to me that she was, that she was really dealing with it and she needed that time. I, I felt a bit let down. I mm -hmm. felt, um, um, I felt disappointed and angry and quite worried. So I, I, I slowly left home, I finished college and I moved to Bangalore. I really thought if everything was behind me. There was no contact with the family, I, you know, I, I never contacted them after that. Uh, and your mother at this point um, started sort of feeling contact with them, right? Which she is her did. way of guessing of coming to terms with what was happening and, and showing her support for you. You moved abroad. You studied there for a while, you met your now husband and then you got married. You told me that you spoke to your mom in law who is a therapist and that's when you were able to finally confront the issue because you could talk to her about what had happened. I was 25. That was when I um, had a conversation for the first time, you know, a real conversation about it. I was able to speak my mind and actually describe to somebody uh, what had happened. Yeah. And my mum my law is a counsellor. She's the easiest person to talk to and um, she was a huge support. You know, now when I look back at it, I knew that I didn't have the strength at that time to yeah, talk about it right. to anyone. In 2013, you had your son um, and two years later, you started having panic attacks and you later discovered through therapy that this was connected to what had happened. I was at home with him for the first, uh, for the second year of his life, for two years. And then I started looking for work. Mm. That's when I, um, on one of the days, had this really serious panic attack. Um, it was very debilitating. Mm. I thought I was going to die. Um, it was that bad. And um, they continued. I had a few episodes. Um, I didn't know what was the what was causing it, what was the reason. Um, but I somehow find my, found myself with a therapist. She helped me break down everything in life, but she just kind of dug, dug my history, dug my past, and uh, together we were able to put two and two together because she somehow figured out that um, because my son was at the same age when my sexual abuse started, right. I was um, my body had quite a strong memory right. of it. It remembers physically, and um, that caused a very serious physiological. Um, effect mm. and yeah so that manifested in a panic attack and that was the first time I was able to deal with it right properly so it gave you some kind of resolution um, it did um, 
quite glad that I was able to use whatever means I had, you know, people around me, and um, that I was able to get to this point. Um, child sexual abuse survivors also go through a lot of shame and guilt. Um, I haven't experienced it yet. I haven't felt any uh, victim shaming yet. Uh, but that might be because I've always had lesser friends who were quite open to uh, me sharing my experience. Having said that, you know, I haven't told everybody about right. it, you know, at least not people who uh, matter in this case, you know, maybe uh, not uh, my cousin's family. So, um, it's not to say that I won't face it in the future, but yeah, it's, it's really important to talk about it. It's just so easy to make yeah. someone feel like it was their fault. Yeah. It, it was probably a big part of the way I felt, uh, because back I wish, then. you know, back then, yeah, which silenced me because of which I did not tell anyone. Do you feel stronger now? Do you think you have the strength to deal with what happened back then? No, absolutely, yeah, I do. I do. I think I have dealt with it, and it, it probably is going to be a lifelong process, you know, but I think I have taken huge set of steps in the right direction. If you have been impacted by the issues raised in this episode, please pre-order the books and contribute. Thanks for watching.